So there are different kinds of motivation, and you maybe have seen these two before. Extrinsic is that external motivation, the stick in the carrot, right? You know, a bad grade versus a good grade or a reward of some kind. Intrinsic is that internal motivation, and that mastery motivation might fit more into their intrinsic. So here's an interesting question. Which type of motivation is better? Do we, what is better, extrinsic or intrinsic? Intrinsic and extrinsic are really two sides of the same coin. Almost all motivation that is intrinsic started off as extrinsic to begin with. Think about playing the piano. I've got a couple friends who are very talented musicians and they do it professionally. However, to begin with, their parents made them do it. And that's a very common story when it comes to those things, okay? So intrinsic motivation and extrinsic motivation are linked. So we don't, we're not gonna be afraid of extrinsic. How do you make something go from extrinsic to intrinsic? That's the sneaky part. Because in the end, we need it to be intrinsic. If we want students to be independently motivated, it's gotta be intrinsic. So there are three factors that contribute to the development of intrinsic motivation. It starts off extrinsic. And if you can meet these three factors, then you are going to promote the development of intrinsic motivation. And when they're not met, not so good. So let's define these a little bit better. Autonomy. Autonomy is the desire to be your own boss. It's the belief that the decisions you make have an impact on your life. Okay. It does not mean complete independence and isolation from other people. And the reason I stress that is especially college students, especially beginning college students, they act like, oh, I got this. I don't, no one needs to help me. I don't want to talk to professors. I don't want to use the tutors. I don't want to do this, that, or the other, which is actually a very foolish way to approach college because the demands have gone way up. And frankly, adults are, or humans are social animals. We are not designed to learn things in complete isolation. So autonomy says the choices I make um, make a difference in the way my life is. Competence says the belief that I'll be successful at it. Okay, so uh, I feel like this one explains why none of us did that calculus. I do not know calculus and I wouldn't even know where to start on those. Okay, so competence says if I try, I have a good shot of being right. And relatedness, I think to me, this one is the is a very tricky one to define, but a really important one. Relatedness says, is what I'm being asked to do in alignment with my identity and the groups I belong to? Okay, um, so is this the kind of thing you would ask someone like me to do? All right, and I know that's a little nebulous, but don't worry, we're going to explore that more. So those three things need to be met. And if one of those or all of them is not being met, then you're gonna have trouble being intrinsically motivated. All right, so I'm gonna go through each one and you're gonna just give me like one or two things. So autonomy. So a classic way for autonomy is just give them choices. Works great for teenagers. You know, sometimes when I have an agenda in my at therapy sessions, I'm like, these are the three things we gotta do today. And which one do you wanna start with? Just little things like that can be good. Um, certainly aligning the tasks to personally meaningful goals. Um, going back to rewards and punishments. If rewards and punishments are in line with the goals that the kid has for themselves, they're gonna be much more effective and they're going to buy into them more. So helping students identify the challenge. If attention span is a big part of the problem, then we're gonna address that and we're gonna help them keep that in mind. Assessing where they're at, reinforcing um, these bypass strategies, things like that can be really helpful, paying attention to that content and digging into it in the competence area. And finally, relatedness. Utilize existing relationships develop understanding and healing negative relationships and um, defining that persona. So connecting to those ultimate goals is a really important way. And you could do that for geometry, essays, things like that. I had one um, high school teacher in New Jersey who um, used essay outlining and explored social media. What is the thesis statement of this kid's, of this person's social media account? What are the topics? You know, using that to connect to see those connections can also be really helpful.